Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. I'm Brent Weinberg, the creator of LearnNeuroradiology.com. This is the second part of a lecture about emergency imaging of brain tumors. This one's going to cover what you need to know about classification of brain tumors. So a quick overview so you have a general idea. There's definitely a lot more detailed information out there that you can learn more from later. But this is what you need to know really in an emergency setting. So we're going to cover that quickly so you kind of have a foundation to stand on. So in our first lecture, we talked a little bit about an introduction to brain tumor imaging, particularly in an emergent situation and the role of each of those imaging tactics. In this, we're going to talk really about the common tumors that you might see, particularly with an emphasis on the primary gliomas. That way you sort of know a little bit about them when you may run into them. So the common tumors that you're going to run into really are when people think about brain tumors, they think about the primary gliomas astrocytomas, oligodendrogliomas, glioblastoma. These kind of all fall into the category of primary gliomas. There's a number of other brain tumors you might see as well. Meningiomas are the most common intracranial primary tumors. So those are very common. As you get a little older, particularly if you have another malignancy, metastatic disease is definitely an issue that you should think about. Lymphoma, common thing that you encounter, particularly in referral centers, immunocompromised patients. Sometimes if you have a tumor that's centered in the bone, you have a little bit of a different differential. So we'll talk quickly about that. So the primary gliomas cover the grade two to four primary brain tumors. These are primarily oligodendrogliomas and astrocytomas. The histologic diagnosis is really predominantly made by genetic factors now, but these are the most common two primary brain tumors uh, that you're going to see, or at least primary gliomas or primary intraaxial tumors. Now, when you classify gliomas now, they've really moved towards greater dependence on genetic typing. And this started around 2016 when the WHO reclassified a lot of these tumors. They really favored histologic features, a lot of talk about molecular testing, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. They took this a step further in 2021 to make it further genetically based. Now, there's uh, tumors that can just have molecular features, even though their histology appears a little bit different. If you want to read more about those, you can look up these papers and uh, kind of see in detail about them. But in the emergent setting, you don't need to know about, about that too much. But in general, you can think about primary brain tumors as following this general path. All of these tumors are first classified by their IDH testing. Now, IDH is isocitrate dehydrogenase. It's one of the enzymes of the Krebs cycle, and it's a major driving factor in glioma pathogenesis. And when you have a mutation of IDH, then it drives formation of low-grade glioma, particularly astrocytomas and oligodendrogliomas. Now, when these are associated with a cotyledon of the short arm of chromosome 1 or lo and long arm of chromosome 19, that's called a 1P19Q cotyledon. And these are defined as oligodendrogliomas. Oligodendrogliomas come in two grades, grade two and grade three. Grade three are the more aggressive anaplastic ones. This is the characteristic feature of oligodendrogliomas. Now, when these mutated IDH mutated tumors have 1P19Q intact, they're by definition astrocytomas. These come in three grades, grade two, grade three, and grade four. They go up this way in aggressiveness. Grade three are the anaplastic. They're intermediate in aggressiveness. The most aggressive IDH uh, mutated astrocytomas are these grade four IDH mutated astrocytomas. Now, the most aggressive gliomas are IDH wild type. The one we most commonly hear about, the one we commonly know about is glioblastoma. Now, I'm going to note that if you do not have IDH wild type, if you're IDH mutated, it is no longer called a glioblastoma. It falls in this IDH uh, mutated grade four astrocytoma here. But then they also introduce this other characterization. Sometimes these tumors, despite their histology, have molecular features that make them most similar to glioblastoma. This is an EGFR mutation or a TERT mutation. If you have any of those features, regardless of the grade, these are now called astrocytomas with molecular features of GBM or glioblastoma. If you don't have those features, then these are simply called IDH wild type astrocytomas, either grade two or grade three anaplastic astrocytoma. Now, the reason I arranged them the way that I did is as you go from left to right on this slide, these become more aggressive tumors. They're worse and they have a worse prognosis. And what's interesting about this is grade three IDH wild type astrocytoma has a worse prognosis than the IDH mutated tumors. 
Now that you've looked at all that, like in the emergence setting, you don't really need to know the details of this. Just know that it exists. Know that you can look it up if you need to and that you, you might see some of this in the imaging history. Now the primary glioma is like the key pearls that you can take away from that are when you have high grade tumors, they have more mass effect. They tend to have more hemorrhage. They tend to have more enhancement. Now, as I pointed out already in that new nomenclature, not all grade four astrocytomas are glioblastomas. Additionally, some grade two or three tumors are going to behave like glioblastomas based on those genetics and molecular features. So the chromosome abnormalities, EGFR, and terp mutation. Uh, so just be aware of that. They've gotten rid of the term multiforme, okay? They're not called glioblastoma multiformes anymore, uh, but people have really stuck with the GBM acronym, so you can still kind of use that. Gliosarcoma. You may see this sometimes. This is a distinct lesion. It combines features of sarcomas and gliomas. A lot of times they're going to have like the, uh, they may have broader dural attachment involvement of the underlying bone, but many times, at least on imaging, they're going to be undifferentiable from glioblastoma. Oligoastrocytomas, that's now no longer a term. Either your tumor has IDH mutation and 1P19Q cotyledon, and it's an oligoastrocytoma. If it uh, does not, if a 1P19Q is intact, it's an astrocytoma. No oligoastrocytomas anymore. You may run into that term a little bit if people had their histology done before 2016 or before the testing was common. Gliomatosis cerebri used to be its own entity. Now just a descriptive term. If you have a grade two glioma that involves three or more lobes, you can call it a gliomatosis type pattern, but it's still described by its histologic definition, like what we talked about already. Other tips you might see for common tumors. So we talked about the primary gliomas already. Uh, let's just cover a couple of the, a factoid about some of the other tumors. Meningiomas are the most common intracranial primary tumor. Uh, so you're going to see those. They're extraaxial masses, often along the dura, can involve the bone. We'll see those a little bit more later. Metastatic disease, common in older patients, the most common intracranial tumor overall. Okay, so if you have another malignancy, think about metastatic disease. If you have multifocal lesions, think about metastatic disease. Lymphoma, common in immunocompromised patients, such as those with HIV. If you see solid multifocal disease, abnormal diffusion, uh, maybe multiple areas, think about lymphoma. Finally, when you see a tumor that appears to be centered in the bone, uh, there's a special differential. You have to think about metastatic disease, lymphoma, meningioma, uh, maybe plasmacytoma. Think about those things. So your differential is a little bit different when the center of the tumor appears to be arising from the bone. Thanks for tuning in to this lecture about some of the classification of tumors, some facts you need to know about that when you're seeing a tumor in the emergent setting. Uh, you really just need to know that this framework exists. In some of the upcoming lectures, we're going to talk about some of the imaging features that you need to consider. I'll show you some examples of these different tumors. So be sure to uh, check back in and check out the rest of those videos. If you haven't seen the earlier video, be sure to go back and check out the introductory video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on learnerradiology.com. Thanks to everyone for tuning in today.